What's up, audit fans? Dr. Amanda White here. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that this week I've been taking over Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand's Instagram channel for Audit Proud. It's the 26th of September 2019, and we're celebrating five years of Audit Proud. I officially started working in audit in 1997 when I took a cadetship position at Coopers and Lybrand, which is now Price Waterhouse Coopers. But fun fact, my career in audit actually began before then when I was in high school. My very first job was as a shelf price auditor. That means that my job was to scan items, check the shelf price and make sure that those two matched up because if the price scanned higher than what was advertised on the shelf, we had to give that good to the client for free or to the customer. So my very first job when I was 15 was at a Target store, um, the department store, as an auditor. I gave that away and then funnily enough, I ended up in computer audit at Coopers and Lybrand. And then eventually I moved into academia to do what I do now, which is I love teaching audit to students and telling everybody about our fantastic profession. So it is five years of celebrating Auditor Proud online. Uh, I can't believe we've been doing that for five years already. Thank you to the automation team for this fantastic Audit Hero badge. Um, everybody knows that I love audit, but today is the day that we come together as a community to share our passion for this fantastic profession. There's certainly been a lot in the news about audit recently. In Australia, we've got a joint parliamentary inquiry into audit. There's been similar inquiries in the UK. PwC was just fined almost 8 million US dollars for failing to comply with independence requirements. But audit is not broken. Audit is filled with lots and lots of dedicated people working hard to learn to make the best professional judgments that they can in really difficult and complicated circumstances where we are trying to figure out, do we have all the information? Are we making the right decisions, especially in where there's a lot of gray area and where there's a lot of accounting estimates? So to celebrate five years, the Discover Audit team asked people to talk about the five things that they've taken away from a career in audit. So what are my five takeaways? Number one, communication skills. You learn to communicate with everybody from people who work on the factory floor right up to the audit committee with executives, with partners within your firm. So communication is number one. Number two is teamwork. Because no audit is done alone, you're always working in a team. Working with diverse groups of people, especially with international business, is becoming really, really important. Number three was that there are no easy answers in terms of making professional judgments. That's actually the basis. It was the basis of my PhD that we're all influenced by our own education, our own upbringing, our own clients and what we've been exposed to. So no two people make decisions in exactly the same way. We've got methodologies that we can follow, but professional judgment is so contextual and it's really, really complicated. So the best thing that you can do when it comes to learning about making professional judgments is practice. It's working with your team, it's discussion, it's learning. Audit is, is really one of those lifelong learning situations. So we've got communication, teamwork, making decisions, um, and uh, professional judgments. Number four is really collecting evidence. And it's, what do I need to know? Where do I get that evidence from? How do I know that it's appropriate? So gathering that evidence. And then the fifth thing, and the thing that I think is probably most useful to people who are studying audit, who maybe don't want to be auditors, is the ability to identify and understand risks and internal controls. Because even if you want to be in marketing, you want to be a sports agent, uh, you want to run your own business, you need to be able to identify the risks and then implement controls to minimize the impact of those risks or negative impacts of those risks on your business. Now, in today's YouTube video, I'm doing something a little bit different. 
It's not just going to be me talking about Auditor Proud. You hear me talk about that all the time. Um, the thing that we're going to do today is we're going to have sort of three little segments. The first segment we're going to do is a discussion with the team from Discover Audit. You can follow them on Instagram, on Facebook, social media, everywhere. They're the ones behind Auditor Proud. And we're going to hear Crystal talk about what Auditor Proud and Discover Audit is all about and some new initiatives coming up. I'm here with Crystal from the Center for Audit Quality. And if you're not following the CAQ on Twitter, on Facebook, or on YouTube, you really should because there's some really great resources there. But Crystal, tell us about what the CAQ does for educators like me in regards to audit. Yes. The Center for Audit Quality is a organization that's governed by the largest eight accounting firms and the AICPA, and they come together to create resources, educational materials, um, they are matters that they think are important to the profession. And for today, that matter is talent. And what can they do to help provide resources to educators to bring talent into the profession? Mm -hmm. And so we have all kinds of case studies um, that can be I used to know in your class. Studies. Studies. There I've are only used the videos. Of case studies. Oh, that's yes. awesome. We actually have a new case study that's being developed at the Ooh. moment right now, but we have three currently that exist. Um, one is LCD Cloud Systems. Um, we have one that's based on um, ICFR, Internal Control Financial Reporting. Um, it goes through the whole uh, case from soup to nuts, as they say. And, soup um, to nuts. I don't think I'm going to say that. And if you, um, you go online and register, um, you can um, get the discussion guides. We work with Harvard case studies oh, um, to create those. Awesome. Um, we also have our new Discover Audit website that we have created and that's specifically that's for around students, right so if you move this way a little bit there's this is that would be oh hang on discover well, audit. it's one of these this discover audit. <laughs> but um yes discover audit is a website that we've created for students and educators um, and it's particularly just for a career in public accounting it's more educational resources for those who don't quite know what audit is yet it which a lot of students audit. i get that yes. blank look like welcome yes. to audit yes Exactly. <laughs> it provides everything from videos. Um, we have career trajectories that have the actual follow the path of actual auditors and showing how much they make, the opportunities they get along the way. Um, we have lots of fun videos. And there's a documentary coming, right? There's a documentary. That's what this sign is about. We have a new Road Trip Nation um, documentary. They're an organization that provides career exploration information on different various paths of for um, whatever professions, careers, students want to go to, giving them exposure to different paths. And they didn't currently have anything on accounting and audit. And so we have helped them add that to their portfolio. Um, the road trip started at August 5th. Um, they are currently interviewing professionals all across the country. That's so awesome. Yes. I'd love that job. Yes. That it will so come great. out in 2020. Um, so we're working I'll be sure with that. to share that when it does happen. Yes, um, and we're also putting profiles on their online system, which is called Share Your Road, and that provides students with the opportunity to, when they when you go into those college systems where you enter your criteria of what you like, now accounting and auditing will pop up as an option, ah. and they will be able to go through and look at profiles of various professionals who followed that career path to see if anything resonates with them that they might want to get. Fantastic! In. This sounds yes. really really exciting. And also, if you didn't know, the CAQ are the people behind Auditor Proud. We are. So we in are. September. Auditor Proud. Oh, there's like a great <laughs> shirt there. Um, but definitely keep an eye out for that hashtag in September on Instagram, it's on Twitter. It's September 26th. September 26th. Yes. Fantastic. From daylight to sundown, we will be just sharing all of our pride for why we are proud to be auditors. And down under, we start about a half a day ahead. Yeah, there you go. So we're always a little bit confused it's, it's as to... Whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Crystal. I will put links to all of the resources that we talked about here in the description to the video so that you can find out more. Of course, you know I love audit, but I want everybody else to find out how fantastic this profession is. 
ditched my order to proud hat because hats just make my head itchy. I don't know what it is. But our second segment is a whole lot of little snippets of interviews of people that I've worked with um, who have worked with us at UTS in teaching audit, students of mine who've gone out into the profession, uh, people that I know who I want to showcase in terms of their career paths and what audit has done for them and how audit has changed in those uh, past five years um, and the biggest changes that they've seen. Not everybody stays in audit. So audit is a really fantastic foundation for a career in business. And I wanted to share some of their stories with you. So you're going to hear from Medina, you're going to hear from Owen, and you're going to hear from Will. Hi, my name is Medina Aziz. I'm a director at Grant Thornton. I've been working in the audit profession for the last 13 years. I'm Auditor Proud for a number of reasons, and I think the most important thing is that every day I get to work with a diverse range of clients and people that inspire me and that I'm constantly learning from. Uh, certainly I'm proud to say that um, over the 13 years I still have been using computers and Excel in audit, but one thing that's definitely changed in the profession is um, the increasing use of technology um, within our clients, and certainly it's an expectation of auditors to really understand custom and complex systems that are used to produce financial data um, and I think that's definitely involved over the last 13 years. Hi, I'm Owen Baker. I'm the Group Financial Reporting Manager at Lynx Cargo Care Group. Uh, I started here only five months ago after 12 years uh, working in public practice, uh, studying my career and spending that entire time with Grant Thornton. Um, during that time I worked in Sydney, um, I also worked in the UAE in Dubai for a short term secondment, and I also spent uh, two and a half years working for Grant Thornton International in London. Uh, that project was focused on uh, audit methodology development um, and, and was not at all a client facing role, but purely um, a, a technical um, focus role. Uh, I've also uh, tutored at UTS with Amanda. Um, and, and did that for two and a half years before I uh, went over to the UK. Um, I, I think you have a really good, um, curious mind from working in audit, um, and, and it's that, those problem solving skills and, and that, that, that ability to, to dig into um, the, the relevant uh, issues. Um, and to help you find the answer to problems. Um, I, I think I spend the majority of my time here problem solving day to day. Yeah, so working in, um, in audit methodology for two and a half years, I guess was very focused on change in the audit profession um, to now have stepped into um, a financial reporting focus role outside of the, I guess, the audit industry per se. Um, I, I can see it from a, a different angle again. Um, the Interaction with technology has got to be the biggest change that's happening at the moment. Um, how, how auditors can use transaction data in order to be able to audit um, both P&L, but then also to, to help out with investigation into balance sheet um, account audit um, work is, is, I guess, where, what's happening at the moment. And that ability to then move into continuous auditing into the future as well. Um, and, and not have such periodical um, type work um, and, and equally to try and preempt um, where things can be going wrong before, before we even get to a period and kind of audit area is where I see kind of the biggest changes happening at the moment. Um, I guess my one piece of advice would be do it. Um, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't hold back, don't um, hesitate in getting into the industry. Um, I have nothing but positive things to say about my time working um, in public practice and with Grant Thornton and the opportunities it's given me um, both internally with, the, with, with Grant Thornton, the, the audit firm, um, during that 12 years. You know, you only stay with an employer for, for a, you know, a period of time like that because you have amazing opportunities. And being able to travel um, to all of the different places in the world that I've seen, um, that's as a result of the fact that audit is such a, um, a global practice and, and, and if, that, if that's something that really interests you, then definitely that's the career to get into. 
Hi, I'm Will, and I'm Auditor Proud because I get to do what I love every day, which is helping people and to build trust in society. So what does that mean? Um, I work with a team of um, specialists who help with process improvement, utilising my background in audit to help improve audit in PwC. So I work for PwC in our assurance practice, currently in our assurance transformation team. Um, my current focus is on our offshore strategy, so how do we um, create that onshore capacity for our team and increase that speed of delivery. Um, in my day-to-day -day role, I partner with a range of stakeholders to help with um, the way that teams can more effectively and efficiently um, perform their audits to the same um, high quality standard that we've set. One thing that's really exciting about being an auditor is just the opportunities that you get exposed to. So um, starting off as a fresh like intern or graduate, you really get exposure to a wide range of stakeholders from the CFO to a large multinational to um, the small startups that you might see um, growing up here and there. Um, it's one of those opportunities that you can really um, make and shape into your own. So um, I started off my career um, client facing in um, the external audit or financial statement audit um, area and now I've sort of moved on internally and I'm um, able to use my audit skills to really make a difference um, for the teams who um, service our clients. Our final segment for this video is with Gina and Vanessa from Automation. Automation are the team that brings you Caseware, which is one of the largest pieces of audit software and audit work paper and client and uh, system audit management um, available in the world outside of the big firms and their own proprietary systems. But I caught up with Gina and Vanessa and also Jennifer from their team um, at the American Accounting Association. And I wanted to showcase a little bit for you the future future of audit and what automation sees is the future. Um, hopefully in uh, future episodes, I'll also have some discussions. You can see an old interview I've got with the guys from MindBridge, which is another data analytics and audit tool. Um, and then hopefully in the future, we'll also be talking with Olwen Connolly from Inflow. You would have seen um, Mark Edmondson from Inflow in one of my World Congress videos. I'll pop a link to that whichever side it is, um, as well if you wanted to go back and check that out. But the future of audit heavily involves technology um, and companies like Automation are really leading the way. So let's hear from Vanessa and from Gina. Hi everyone, I'm here with Vanessa from Automation. Vanessa, tell me a bit about what you do. So I am the Senior Director for Revenue Generation for Automation. Uh, simply that means that I look after all of marketing, sales and customer service. So I'm here obviously to help promote uh, our flagship product idea. Um, automation is the only US distributor of the product in the country. And um, so we have a superb market here with the academic, pro with the academic market. Um, and we're here really to promote um, idea and to get it into the classroom for uh, all the many universities around the country. And everybody's talking about data analytics, there's lots of discussion, you know, what are you doing to put data analytics within your course? So what does automation offer for academics out there? So that's a good question. So Especially audit academics like myself. Yes. So um, the tool, our flagship product idea um, is used extensive globally. Um, it's one of the leading products in the world for this type of thing. Um, it's been in the marketplace for 30 years um, and it's used by internal auditors, external auditors. It's now getting reach into the operational areas and even with compliance. Um, and so it's a very sturdy program which is also used for forensics. Oh, um, okay. Uh, yes, forensic auditors use it a lot because of the strength and the power of the tool. Uh -huh. And so as an academic, how would they find out more information about how to use IDEA or any of the other products? That's an excellent question. So on our website we have um, a we have the academic program listed there and they can call, they can get some information there. They can also call in uh, Gina who is our academic program coordinator also is uh, open to taking calls from anybody and answering any specific questions. Fantastic. And if people are international, they're not here in the US, is there somewhere 
somewhere where they can contact someone about using automation and idea in their country? Absolutely. What they want to do is they want to have a look at the Caseware website. Okay. I'll put a link to that in the description. Okay. And they have their list of all the, the global distributors, so they just need to find their location, pick up the distributor, and then call that distributor in their area. Fantastic. And a big shout out to my distributor in Australia, who's Craig Walden, who's our Caseway manager. He's doing a fantastic job in terms of helping us as academics. Well, thank you very much, Vanessa, for chatting with me. And uh, if you want any more information, definitely get in touch with them. Thank you very much, Amanda. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Gina from Automation. Gina, tell me about what you do here at Automation. I am facilitating the academic partnership for automation and Caseware IDEA. Uh, we are trying to uh, encourage our professors, colleges and universities across the nation uh, to use IDEA in the classroom uh, and to uh, really open up their students to how data analytics is incorporated into the academic arena and accounting, auditing and fraud. Now if I'm an academic and I want to use this, do I need to have my own data set? You don't have to have your own data set oh, thank necessarily. Uh, we actually have a lot of data sets uh, in our files that we can share with our professors, uh, as well as a lot of the textbooks that we are in. They actually have data sets that go along with their case studies mm -hmm. in the textbooks, and they have access to, to all of that information. I've definitely seen that in well. the in the back of some audit books. There's, I think there's still CDs in That's some correct. of them, or That's maybe right. a download now. That is correct. And if you're a student, you're at a place where your professor or your lecturer isn't quite up to date with using data analytics yes. and incorporating something like this in the course. Yes. Is there some way that they can? learn about this, get some practice while they're studying before they go out there to hit the graduate job market? There is a treasure trove of videos out there, both on the Caseware website mm -hmm. as well as Automation's website that you can uh, learn really idea and different aspects of what idea can do all on your own. Fantastic. I will put links to those. I think one of the key things for graduates today is to be self-starters. Sure. If your university doesn't offer it, think about what is the skills gap, mm -hmm. what do you need to get that graduate job, and then go out there and just figure out what that is and, and right. search for things, and hopefully this helps right. students right. as well. We want to be accessible uh, to our professors, to our students, anybody really that wants to use IDEA and learn how to use it. We want to make sure we're out there for them. Fantastic, excellent. Thanks very much, Gina. Thanks for interviewing me. Happy Auditor Proud for 2019. That's the end of this video. Of course, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I always appreciate the thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't, if you're interested in more audit and accounting content. I've got plenty coming up this year, including some really fantastic interviews with AICPA exam prep providers and the AICPA system. If you're interested in the American CPA and professional qualification program, I'm gonna have a whole lot of new stuff coming out uh, in 2020 about auditing um, and some fantastic new projects as well coming up for the rest of 2019 around audit quality and audit independence. But happy Audit a Proud Day. Celebrate our love for audit loud and proud and I will see you next time. Bye.